Good day. My name is Aline Cassidy. I am a German and a Russian teacher from Casper, Wyoming. I am not from America. I am actually from Germany. I've studied in Germany Bachelor's of Arts and Masters of Education to teach German and Russian as a foreign language. In 2011, I have completed an exchange semester with a student from Russia. So I have lived in St. Petersburg for one semester. In 2013, my life took me to America as I got married to an American soldier. Since then, I've been living in North Carolina and in Casper. In Casper, I teach Russian and German in a middle school. CY Middle School is my home and I've been teaching there for four years now. But that's enough about me. Now I want to get started about my presentation that has the topic, the importance of teaching culture and history in a foreign language classroom. I want to give you an overview over the content of this workshop. Number one, the reason behind teaching culture. Number two, what is culture? Number three, how do I include culture in my classroom? Number four, I'm going to look at higher level thinking and connection with culture. I will look at different days of the week that I address culture in. Monday, reading and listening comprehension. Wednesday, today in Russian history. Thursday, song day. And cultural items on Friday. Number five, teaching strategies that I use in my classroom. And number six, teaching culture in the foreign language. Number seven, you can take a look at my bibliography to see what texts I was looking at in order to create this workshop. Number one, introduction, the reason behind teaching culture. Culture and foreign language goes hand in hand. While learning a foreign language, culture is a very essential and necessary tool in order to achieve the communication goal. I am from Germany and coming to America make me open my eyes about the cultural differences there are. As a student at the University of Potsdam, I had the chance to study in St. Petersburg, Russia. I had similar experiences there with the necessity of knowing culture as well as the language. My language skills were great, but my cultural skills were miserable. I had teachers that left culture on the back burner, and that did not play out well for me when I went to study in Russia or while living in America. I encountered many situations in which I realized the cultural differences, and I seemed to be overwhelmed. I would feel bad if I made a cultural faux pas or if I said things in a way that would be okay in Germany to say, but indeed in English, it would be a very hurtful phrase. Cultural learning is a lifelong learning skill. And I want my students to be able to continue the lifelong learning even after they are no longer in my classroom. Here is an example to show you what questions about culture were in my head, which never got answered in my English lessons in high school. One of the questions that I asked myself is, why is it called shipping items to your house if no ship is actually involved? <laughs> it would drive my husband crazy when I point out that there is actually no shipping happening. Other questions that arose when I came to America, why would people meet in America and not shake my hand with a strong grip, showing confidence and appreciation to meet me? 
Why would Russians not shake hands over a threshold? Well, why do Germans start kissing you on each cheek while meeting you for the second time in their life? With these questions I have presented to you, you can see why culture is essential to our foreign language classroom. Actfuls 5C also include culture. To interact with cultural competence and understanding, relating cultural practices to perspectives, learners use the language to investigate explain and reflect on the relationship between the practices and perspectives of the culture studied. Relating cultural products to perspectives. Learners use the language to investigate, explain and reflect on the relationship between the products and perspectives of the cultures studied. What is culture? Garza states in his article, Culture in Foreign Language Teaching, the fifth skill, that not only should we include the big C in our lessons, but we should also address the small C. He explains that the big C includes famous writers, art, literature, and the small C includes objectives that affect our daily life. For my students, these questions are such as, how do they go to work each day? How do they get to the grocery store? Who buys the groceries? What does the grocery store look like? Do they have a Walmart? Garza? treats culture as the fifth skill. That sounds like being the fifth wheel on a wagon. I prefer to treat culture differently in my classroom. I include it whenever I can and I address it almost daily. Villavincenzo asks in his article, Teaching Culture in a Foreign Language Classroom, a great question. That will help me explain how I include the culture in my classroom. What is culture? Similar to Gazda, he includes obvious cultural items such as beliefs in philosophy, geography, religion, holidays, music, art, and history in his definition. How do I include culture in my classroom? The most challenging question is, how do I bring culture in my classroom? For non-native speakers, this might even be a more challenging question than for native speakers. Actful created this useful triangle. The triangle will help us determine what to include. It doesn't matter if we call this the big C or the small C, according to Garza, or if we call it perspective products and practice it. Perspectives, meaning, attitudes, values, and ideas. Practices, patterns of social interactions. Products, books, tools, foods, laws, music, and games. The most important factor we should include in our thinking are the students. What do we want the students to know? We want them to be able to understand the culture. And the best way to get there is by exposing the students to the culture at every second possible. Inspire the students to ask questions and Explore the cultural differences. I would like to bring up an example from my classroom. We were reading a text about the Russian sauna, banya. The students read about people going to the banya ever so often in order to converse, 
drink tea during the breaks, and then Russians would beat each other with tricks. My students were quite intrigued by the fact that Russians would love to go to the sauna so much and why they would beat each other with sticks and tricks. We started researching the health benefits of using a sauna. At the end, my students were able to answer their own questions and they were even willing to use the sauna at the local fitness center their parents attend. These moments when the students ask questions and start their own research are the best part of my lesson. I inspired them to think about the cultural differences and question them as well. I love to learn with the students. What resources are my students using? How does knowledge change their mind? How can higher level thinking questions support the student's ability to compare, contrast, and analyze. Higher order thinking and connection with culture. Incorporating culture can be challenging. Some teachers prefer a cultural day of the week and some teachers include a quick cultural session during the lesson presenting differences in culture and phrases in the target language that students might want to use when in the other country. I want to enable students to use their knowledge and not just take information in, but work with the information. I teach culture every day and I will show you how I include the culture and inspire students to higher level thinking. The next section has four under sections. I want to talk about Monday, reading and listening comprehension. Wednesdays, today in Russian history. Thursdays, our song days and about cultural items on Fridays. On Monday, reading and listening comprehension. Mondays, I practice reading and listening comprehension with the students. We use exclusively authentic texts in the target language. Depending on age proficiency level, I have a variety of texts available that address the following topics. Nice to meet you, language basics, and classroom environment. Who am I? Personal descriptions, hobbies, and pastimes. We are family, family relationships, and pets. Come on, let's go. Community places and directions. Let's eat. Food, beverages, and preferences. Where are you going? Schedules and travel information. My colleagues and I have developed these topics and we have made it an effort to find any authentic online resources, including videos, blogs, questionnaires, social media profiles in the target language. These text blogs and videos are indeed cultural items delivering information about daily life and routines and the community. Students are not only answering the questions about the text, but they are also analyzing the background of the videos. They are exploring the foreign language websites while starting to recognize these cultural differences. The first thing my students said while listening to a Russian speaker was, they're speaking very fast. That is cultural learning right there. And the students learn without recognizing that they are exposed to another culture. Wednesday, today in Russian history. Wednesdays are the history days in my classroom. We usually read through a text describing what happened in Russian history, and then we start exploring. I will present to you a strategy that I use with my students. I will explain some more strategies I am using in my classroom in the next section. We read about the St. Isaac's Cathedral in St. Petersburg and its Golden Dome. 
It was quite difficult for the students to imagine what it looked like. And I showed some pictures and we went on a tour in the cathedral using Google Earth. I enabled the students to take a look at the marble flooring and the icons. Here in Google Earth, the students have the ability to look around in the cathedral. And I can even create a tour with them and explain what all these different paintings mean or how the cathedral was built. Of course, questions arose such as how long did it take to build the cathedral? How expensive was it to build it? Why do Russians put a golden roof on a cathedral if they could sell it and give the money to poor people? This is cultural learning. And this is how I inspire my students to think deeper and answer their own questions. Sometimes I let them research answers and sometimes I will give an answer or I start a discussion. Thursday song day. This is probably the most favorite day of my students. We will listen to a Russian song. Usually I ask questions of what the song is about after watching the video. Sometimes the students make a comment such as it's weird and then we discuss of what they mean by that comment and how the video is different from music videos in the US. Furthermore, I use cognates from the lyrics that the students then translate into English. Then we work on using a dictionary while translating some unknown words used in the chorus. And lastly, we translate the chorus. Sometimes I play a song game of bingo in which the students get a bingo sheet and mark the words as they hear them in the song. The person who gets a bingo first receives a little prize. The exercise improves the students' listening comprehension skills. Other times I give a word or a phrase and the students have to count how many times the word or phrase is sung in the song. That's a great way to combine working with the language and the culture. Friday, cultural items. Cultural items are plenty, as stated in the article written by Kutschall. More than a decade of standards, integrating culture in your language instruction. She underlined the fact that Culture includes perspective, practices, and products. I use products such as food items and souvenirs or fairy tales and stories. We talk about famous Russian people such as Gagarin, the first man in space, or Pushkin, the Russian Shakespeare. I address the history of the Russian flag or talk about Matryoshka dolls. Another cultural item I use in my classroom are fairy tales. My students love to read Russian fairy tales, such as The Princess Swan or The Story of the Golden Fish. YouTube provides a variety of those fairy tales in Russian. The absolute favorite cartoon is The Russian Winnie Pooh. We usually watch the cartoons with English subtitles. It's a great opportunity for the students to immerse themselves into that other culture and understand what Russian kids watch on TV. I choose the cultural items and parts of history that are interesting for the students to learn about. I do not necessarily fit them to the topics I am teaching. My goal is to expose the students to as many different cultural items as possible. The student is continuously enabled to explore a variety of cultural items and perspectives instead of being exposed to culture 
only when it fits to the topic or unit that is being taught. Number five, teaching strategies that I use in my classroom. As I mentioned before, I am using higher level thinking questions and total participation techniques in order to inspire the students to compare, contrast, and analyze. As Dilma and Kramer are describing it in their work, Teaching Culture in the 21st Century Language Classroom, I want the students to be an active constructor of knowledge. I want to present to you some of the higher level thinking questions I am asking the students. I chose the following topics to give examples. Culture. How come that Russians have different traditions and superstitions than we have? Russian flag. Why is a flag an important symbol for a country? And what does a flag symbolize? Siberia. What does life look like? when people live above the Arctic Circle. Diversity of languages. How come that people speak different languages around the world? Russian population. Why are so many people living towards the border of Russia, but not so much in the northern part of Russia? And Tsardom. What is the difference between a king and a Tsar? These questions are great to start communication between the students. I mentioned to the students there is no right or wrong answer. I tell them that their answers have to be plausible and a good explanation of what they are thinking. Higher level thinking questions can be a great discussion starter. Another way of supporting higher level thinking is to let students write their own texts by using a writing prompt. I use that especially while talking about history. What would have happened if... Dot, dot, dot. Which Russian Tsar or famous person would you choose for your zombie apocalypse team? And explain why. I employ total participation techniques in my classroom in order to increase the student's response rate and to track students' progress. I will present to you some of the examples of the total participation techniques I use most. There is a huge variety of them and using them too much will tire the students out. For that reason, I am using some that are most common and fun for the kids to participate. Yes, no, hold ups. The yes, no, hold up cards are readily available to the students. I am usually projecting sentences on the whiteboard and then I let the students hold up their cards in order to show if they agree or disagree with the sentence. I make sure to ask students why they agree or disagree and then they use this opportunity to explain their opinion. Three sentence wrap up. When we read a text, I give students the prompt, write down three good sentences explaining what you have been reading about. Imagine that you are explaining what this text is about to someone who has not read it. Some of the students like to read out their sentences or they may share it with a partner. Three column writes. I create a table with three columns and three rows. In each cell, I write a higher level thinking question about a te the text we read. I give the students some time to fill in the table. The students then get up, find a partner, and they talk about their answers in the first column. Once they've talked about the answers in their first column, they find a new partner and talk about the answers in the second column. Lastly, they share the answers in the third column with yet another partner. A through Z summary. A through Z summary is probably the most fun. The students will read a text with me and then they receive a paper with a letter on it. They have to write 
about what they have learned from the text, but their sentence has to start with the letter given to them. You will write a one-sentence summary of the text that was read in today's lesson. Your sentence has to start with a word that starts with a letter given to you. Once we've all written our summary, we will put our sentences on the whiteboard. This is a very fun exercise for both me and the students, since we all get to see what everyone came up with in their sentences. Teaching culture in the foreign language. Finally, I want to address that I do teach some of the culture in the foreign language. My reading and listening comprehension sessions are taught in the foreign language. The song days are taught in the foreign language. The days when I talk about history and culture, I usually use English in order to ensure understanding and to inspire students to discuss the topics. It's quite difficult to answer higher level thinking questions when the student's level of proficiency is at a novice mid or a novice high level. Not only do I expose my students to the other culture by using songs or cultural items, I also enable the students to analyze, compare, and contrast. I want the students to be able to express their opinion about other cultures and express the results of their research. For that, higher level thinking questions and total participation techniques help a lot. By using the total participation techniques, I enable the students to work with different students in the classroom and I also inspire them to think about how to express their opinion so that everybody will understand it. Higher level thinking questions are not easy questions to answer. Some of them might be level lower than others, especially when I give writing prompts. I want to ensure that my students do have enough time to think about the question and then to write down the answer. Writing down an answer helps the students to think deeper and to analyze their own text in order to determine whether the recipient will understand their opinion. In conclusion, I feel very strongly about the use of culture as a teaching tool in a foreign language classroom. It allows both the teacher and the student to explore, analyze, and learn about the target culture. Thank you for taking your time watching this presentation and participating in the workshop. Please feel free to contact me with questions or request access to some of the material I have created. I will display my email address right now. I am looking forward to hearing from you and I really hope you enjoyed this workshop and that you got some ideas of maybe using some of the higher level thinking questions in your classroom or trying out some of the total participation techniques.